Today you've set out your energy plan to specifically help businesses. Just explain to us the policy and the idea behind it. Well, essentially, we will provide for businesses the support that we've provided for domestic uh, gas and electricity users um, and, indeed, people on um, heating oil. That is to ensure that prices remain at an affordable level. Now, for domestic users, it was relatively straightforward because there was already a price cap and there are relatively small number of suppliers. The business market is much more complicated uh, and therefore we have had to come up with a solution that caps wholesale prices, which will feed through uh, to the non-domestic sector, and that includes charities and care homes, uh, hospitals and schools, as well as businesses. And the freeze that you've introduced today lasts for six months. You know, if you're a head teacher or a hospital manager really worried about what happens if energy prices remain as high as they are now in six months' time, what, what reassurance can you give them? The, the reassurance I would give is that, yes, it is announced for six months, but there will be a, a review in three months to see how the scheme is working. We've introduced very rapidly a very broad brush scheme that is covering uh, every user of energy with actually the only exception being um, gas-fired power stations. They're the only exemption from this help, for obvious reasons. Uh, what we want to do is to review how it's working, see whether that is uh, the right approach to support, whether it should be more targeted. But I think I can give some reassurance that at these levels, the government is very well aware that schools, hospitals, hospices, care homes and many businesses would not be able to cope with the level of fuel prices that uh, we currently have. OK, that does give a general sort of indication about your thinking on it. The other question I have is about how it's going to be paid for. What costings have you done? Well, um, these will be um, announced by the Chancellor in the fiscal event on Friday, so I don't want to preempt him. But this is a very expensive scheme. This is the right thing to do because the cost, whether it falls on the taxpayer or on individuals and businesses, is very substantial. It is a substantial cost for the whole economy. But the unfortunate truth is that if this were to fall on individuals and onto businesses, many would not be able to afford it. Businesses would not be able to continue in operation. But the government's shoulders are broader and stronger. And that, in a sense, is what government is for, is to pick up the burdens that individuals cannot bear. And that is what we're doing. The cost would hit the economy one way or another anyway, but it's being taken on collectively uh, rather than falling on individuals and um, non-domestic users. You know, I have to say, it's quite interesting listening to you talking about the broad shoulders of the government. To you, you know, Jacob Rees-Mogg, you know, and again, Liz Truss is someone who <laughs> spent the leadership election telling us that she was going to govern like a Conservative. And yet, really, she's announced one of the radical state intervention policies, the kind of thing that would make Jeremy Corbyn blush. Well, uh, you have to think, what is the state there for, fundamentally? And it seems to me that the state should lead, leave us alone to lead our own lives as much as possible. But there are certain things that individuals cannot do for themselves. And that may be law and order, it may be defence of the realm. But in this circumstance, it is bearing a burden uh, that has, because actually of Putin's illegal uh, war, become unbearable. So the state is there when the individual can't bear the burden. And otherwise, of course, it should leave, leave the individual to get on with his or her own life. So I think this actually fits a fundamentally conservative view uh, of the role of the state. It's the um, uh, uh, last um, uh, bearer of burdens. Cornwall Insight reckons that it could cost £25 billion. Is that in the right region? <laughs> You're trying to tempt me to preempt the Chancellor, and I think that would be discourteous of me. I, I must leave the Chancellor to make his announcement on Friday. Understood. Now, Liz Truss has also said that this is a government all about growth. We know the tax-cutting agenda that she wants to set out. Do you think there's also a case for looking at employment law, perhaps scrapping the 48-hour week? Well, I think we should look at um, regulations, particularly in the context of retained EU law, to see what regulations are suitable 
uh, for economic growth and which ones aren't. We now have the freedom to decide that and that's one of the benefits of Brexit. But it's too early to announce any specific policies but I'm looking forward to the retained EU law bill being introduced into Parliament shortly which will have an um, expedited process for repealing um, unnecessary EU laws. Do you think that the 48-hour week then could be an unnecessary EU law? Um, I, well, you said that, not me. I, I'm, I think it's certainly something that people will raise. I don't want to preempt decisions that haven't been made. Um, but we have to look at whether we have the right system of regulation in this country to maximise economic growth.